All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our next video on environmental science and going over the second part of our series on food systems. Let's get started on this next video. Now, remembering from our last series, a keystone species is a species on which other species in an ecosystem largely depend upon, such that if it were removed, the ecosystem would drastically change. Now remember, the keystone is that center stone. It holds the entire arch together, and it's the weight-bearing stone that if it was not present, the entire arch would collapse. And this is why we call these organisms keystone species. So let's go through and look at a couple examples here of keystone species and how they go through and influence ecosystems. So if we look at this example here, what we're going to see are sea otters and their relationship with their ecosystems. We have urchins, and then we're going to have kelp in this ecosystem. We can talk about the abiotic and biotic factors here, but right now we're just going to focus on the three biotic factors, the sea otters, the urchins, and the kelp. Now, if we look at the food chain here, we're going to see we have our primary producer, our herbivore, and our carnivore here. Now, the sunlight is going to go through and feed our primary producer, the kelp. The kelp is going to go through and feed our urchins, which are herbivores. And the otters are going to go through and feed on the urchins, and those are going to be our carnivores in this ecosystem. Now, this is a delicate balance here. And what we're going to see is our food chain here move up in this hierarchy. And we're going to see initially we're getting that energy from that sunlight which is transferred to the urchins and the urchins are going to go through and they're going to keep that kelp population in check and then the sea otters are going to consume the urchins and they're also going to keep that urchin population in check so what we want to think about is what would happen if i remove the sea otters from the ecosystem what happens if they go extinct well, if I were to remove these sea otters here, what we're going to see is the urchin population is going to go through and explode because there's nothing keeping the urchin population in check. As a result, they're going to consume the kelp at an unsustainable rate. So without the otters, the urchin population is no longer in check and the kelp is over consumed here. As a result of that, what we're going to see is the entire ecosystem is going to collapse because eventually the urchins are not going to have a food source. So what we want to be thinking about here is all abiotic and biotic factors are interconnected with these food webs and food chains and dependent upon each other. And without specific species like our keystone species, our otter here, the removal of that keystone species causes the collapse of the entire ecosystem. Now this was an actual scenario that went through and occurred in Alaska. In the 1990s, sea otter populations off the coast of Alaska declined when orca whales or killer whales ate a large number of the otters. Fewer otters meant more urchins and the increased urchin population caused a huge decline in the kelp forests offshore. The kelp had served as a habitat for many plants and animals. And this is an example of what we call a trophic cascade. Predators at high trophic levels, like our sea otters, indirectly help organisms at low trophic levels by limiting populations at intermediate trophic levels, such as the urchins here. So we want to be thinking about the relationship between all of these organisms and how they go through and influence our ecosystem. Now another really interesting example is the introduction of Yellowstone wolves into Yellowstone National Park. And remember, we're thinking here, keystone species affect biotic, but also the abiotic factors within an ecosystem. So roots of a plant are actually going to go through and prevent erosion. Erosion is just the removal of soil or rock. The roots are going to go through and hold that soil in place. Now, at one point, wolves went extinct in Yellowstone National Park. And as a result of that, the deer population grows drastically. The deer and the elk become so overpopulated that they reduce the shrubbery around the river. As a result of this, since the plants can't go through and hold in the soil, the river is going to go through and erode, become larger, and wind more as a result of this. Well, what researchers found is as this river went through and eroded, and as they introduce wolves back into the park, the deer and elk population declines. And it affects not only the biotic factors, such as the deer and the elk, but it also influences the abiotic factor. It influences the shape of the river, and what they saw is, is the river was eroding less. So when we go through and think about this, remember, every single thing is interconnected here, 
and you have to go through and understand how these keystone species affect the biotic and the abiotic factors within an ecosystem. All right, so this is going to be the end of the video. It's just a quick video on keystone species here, but we are supposed to get three things out of this. What is a keystone species? We want to think about the importance of keystone species in these ecosystems. And we want to think about the role that these keystone species play in that ecosystem and what would happen if we remove where the population declines significantly. This is going to be the end of the video. I will see you all in class tomorrow.